Eso fue tremendo. Esa última parte se llevó la, la, la humanidad de las personas que involved en this en this struggle. Y we're going to open up to um, a discussion, um, uh, answering um, and questions. Uh, there are many people, um, there were at least 40, over 40 people, now there's 35. When you come on, if you want to talk, you could identify yourself. Um, it would be nice to say where you're from. If you're a member of an organization, that'd be great. If you're a student, that's fine too. You know, just uh, introduce yourself, uh, and that's great. Uh, Miguel um, uh, Fiol, Dr. Fiol, uh, if you want to say a few words uh, and some impressions that you might have had, had uh, about the film, and this is Manuel uh, Melendez Lavandera, and also make uh, some comments at the end after you. So uh, please, uh, Miguel, Fiol. Buenas noches. Quiero darle las gracias a todos los miembros, que me incluye a mí del Frente, por hacer esta actividad. Yo soy Miguel Fiol. Y represento una organización que es parte del Frente, como muchas otras, que se llama Puertorriqueños en Minnesota. Yo vengo de Minnesota y allá tenemos un grupo. Eh, ciertamente, eh, este, este film eh, tiene mucho, mucha belleza dentro de sí y al final eh, el humanismo y, y, y lo que pasa entre Heriberto y, y el otro señor fue muy bonito. Eh, yo quiero eh, poner... Tratar de poner en contexto rápidamente, la lucha de las liberaciones de los pueblos incluye muchas opciones, eh, la opción electoral, eh, la opción armada, eh, la opción en negociaciones, opciones legales, etc. Ciertamente esto es una eh, de las formas, como alguien dijo, el independentismo es como un sofá, o un de eso que se puede una persona, todas las personas pueden... Eh, mecerse en el mecedor y, y, y son formas eh, aceptables. Esta forma eh, de acción de liberación eh, es, es muy impactante y, y queremos rendir tributo a, a esto hoy con esta actividad de, de demostrar eh, la valentía, la honradez y la determinación de, de las personas que actuaron en, de esta forma en 1950. Yo quiero, eh, para terminar rápidamente, ensalzar la figura de don Pedro Alviso Campo, la cual eh, me, me apasiona y la he estudiado mucho, eh, eh, diciendo un, un pequeño eh, poema que le he escrito, eh, lo que coges un minuto lo voy a poner aquí, porque eh, como se dijo, eh, don Pedro era huérfano, eh, la madre murió muy joven, don Pedro, tenía nueve años, se eh, ahogó en el río en Ponce y, y, y él no tuvo padre ni madre. Y como un huérfano ha conmovido un pueblo, es el tema del poema. Y el poema dice, el huérfano que levantó un pueblo. Fuiste huérfano a los nueve años, pero eso no ensombreció tus sueños. Al extranjero te lanzó el destino y venciste el rechazo de tu raza sin rincor ni desaliento. Innatamente tu alma era movida por deseo de una patria libre. No tuviste momentos de paz en tu calvario. Serviste... Serviste diez años en esa celda de Atlanta y sufriste el dolor de padre viendo tu familia enajenada. Mas tu ejemplo de valor y sacrificio movió a un pueblo por el colonialismo ultrajado y te convertiste en la voz de su dignidad y el deseo de libertad y respeto por tanto soñado. No pudieron muchas largas noches en los calabozos, en un infierno de calor y de silencio, vencer el sueño que desde niño acariciaste y que llevaste a tu pueblo de libertad sediento. Tu figura crece más cada día. De un niñito huérfano y solitario, llegaste a conmover a un pueblo con tu ejemplo de valor Sacrificio humano.
humano. Presidentes y líderes silenciosamente admiran al niñito del barrio Tenerías que avanzó a la inmortalidad con sus sacrificios por la libertad de un pueblo que amó más que a sí mismo. Muchas gracias. Gracias, doctor. Gracias por esas palabras y ese problema. Gracias a ustedes, gracias a todos los compañeros, hermanos. Manuel Meléndez, La Bandera, ¿Would you like to say a few words? I know that que Manuel está en Puerto Rico. Sí. Uh, muy buenas noches a todas y a todos, compañeros y compañeras. Eh, tremenda, tremenda actividad. La verdad que había visto esta, este documental anteriormente, pero ciertamente cada vez que lo vemos aprendemos más y conocemos más nuestra historia, una historia que nos está negada en, lo, eh, en, en las escuelas y en los cursos de historia de nuestro país, porque el imperio busca que el colonizado no conozca su historia para eh, privarlo de esa arma que es el conocimiento de el sometimiento que estamos eh, eh, que parecemos como pueblo. Miren, a esta actividad hoy, según estamos aquí produciendo la, la película, eh, en el pueblo de Utuado, hoy a, a las 8 de la noche se estuvo presentando también esta película de 1950. Eh, y habían 70 eh, personas participando en Utuado y aquí les comunicamos ahorita a Utuado que habían 30, 40 eh, en, eh, en Nueva York y en otro espacio de Estados Unidos también viendo la película, o sea que nos estábamos conectando y comunicando sobre eso. Esto fue parte y es parte de un proceso que se llama la jornada de celebración del 70 aniversario de la Revolución Nacionalista de 1950, en el cual estamos envueltos eh, varias organizaciones en Puerto Rico y en Estados Unidos. Eh, y han habido charlas sobre la represión en Puerto Rico eh, con el doctor Che Paralitici, y han habido... Eh, anoche en el pueblo de Naranjito, de donde es Jim Negrón, por ejemplo, y se combatió, eh, hubo una actividad de conmemoración y celebración de, de la vida de, de Jim Negrón y de los nacionalistas en Naranjito. Eh, también eh, en estos días, ah, comenzando la semana pasada, el sábado en Utuado, y termina mañana, se ha estado haciendo actividades rescatando esa historia del pueblo de Utuado y de la masacre en Utuado, que hubo eh, en la revuelta de, cuando la revolución nacionalista. Así que se están rescatando esos espacios de, de, de historia por parte de nuestro movimiento eh, de lucha independentista. Hoy eh, en el pueblo de Jayuya también se hicieron los, tra los actos de, del Partido Nacionalista, donde se le entregó al presidente del Partido Nacionalista las llaves de la ciudad eh, de, de Utuado, del pueblo de Utuado, de Jayuya, perdónenme. Eh, de Jayuya, eh, porque en Jayuya se, se, este año se aprobó por la Asamblea Municipal eh, que el día del 30 de octubre es día eh, feriado en honor a, lo, a, lo, a los combatientes eh, de Jayuya. Y eso fue producto de una resolución presentada en la Asamblea Municipal por el asambleísta del Partido Independentista puertorriqueño, que luego tuvo la acogida de todos los asambleístas eh, y fue aprobada unánimemente. Eh, anoche estuve yo en, la, en el barrio Coabé y el Partido Independentista puertorriqueño presentaron la película Filiberto, el documental sobre Filiberto. O sea que muchas actividades de educación y de eh, eh, formación eh, se han estado dando y se siguen dando. El primero de noviembre en la Casa Boy, por ejemplo, se va a hacer una actividad también que va a ser para eh, eh, también conmemorar y celebrar la, el, el ataque nacionalista eh, de, que se mencionó de Elio Torresola y de Griselio Torresola y Oscar Collazo a la Casa Blair. Eh, hoy, en el día de hoy, también se hizo público a través de claridad eh, las organizaciones clandestinas, el Partido Revolucionario de los Trabajadores Puertorriqueños y el Ejército Popular Boricua le, le reconocen y le hacen un homenaje a Don Heriberto Marín. Eh, y lo reconocen como comandante machetero, este, lo cual pues también es parte de este de esta proceso de, de donde estamos celebrando eh, eh, lucha, resistencia, eh, combate de nuestro pueblo, que hoy también seguimos, o sea, nosotros somos parte 
de una generación que como parte de ese pueblo en lucha, generación tras generación, de puertorriqueños luchando contra el colonialismo y luchando por la independencia este, en todos los frentes, como mencionó el compañero eh, Miguel Fiora. Así que celebraciones de verdad por todo lo que estamos haciendo. Para adelante. A los estudiantes del Junte, del uh, Osto College, que sé que están por ahí, algunos eh, me entienden y si no, pues le voy a pedir a Ana que lo traduzca. Don Pedro decía que el estudiante, que el estudiante que pudiendo ser brillante, lo es mediocre, es un mal patriota. Y como yo sé que ustedes no son malos patriotas, estudien y bájense para hacer, eh, seguir los preceptos de Albizu Campo. Lo, lo que vinieron este, son, hablan español, so estamos bien. Oh, that's nice. Gracias. If, uh, um, John, are there any questions on chat? chat? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. The first question uh, posed on the chat is from uh, Brooklyn Storm, Nicole, also known as, from her Taino name as Inaru Guaro. Guara. Uh, Nicole? Hi, muy buena noche. Bendiciones a todo el mundo. Thank you for um, providing us with this informative and historical and heartfelt information. It's actually my second time seeing it, but the impact is still the same. Um, I would like to know if we could have this film uh, voiced over, not only English subtitles, but voiced over in English because the delivery of the sentiments must be impactful. So um, I would like to know if that could be accomplished and what year was this film produced? Does anyone have that answer? Uh, Luis, do you know the answer to that? I know that we would have to, uh, for a voiceover, we would have to contact the director and the publisher. Okay. The, yeah, the, the filmmaker is the one responsible the for that. But this movie actually came out a couple of years ago and in Puerto Rico, and it was very popular. It played in theaters all over the island. It was one of those movies where you go, it plays like five, six times a day. People mm -hmm. pay to see it. And it played in this one particular theater in San Juan for like two months, okay? And then after that, it went to different towns and different theaters, not just in small gatherings, but in actual, you know, theatrical locations for yeah. major movies and stuff. So it was, it did get a lot of, um, a lot of support and uh, a very good response. And in fact, the DVDs for the film are, are right now unavailable, which is why we didn't we're not able to get a version with the english subtitles but yeah it's uh, it's hard to get it's hard to get right now yeah but we'll, we'll try we'll try to and, and we'll put it on frente's uh facebook page uh, so be in the lookout um when we when we find that information for you and while we're on that path uh could we also um ask for filiberto's film in english yeah, that's also something we have to contact the filmmakers. And, uh, you know, these are people that we know, you know, we're in contact, we're in touch with them. So we can definitely forward your uh, comments. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, uh, I don't, if anyone has any additional questions, please indicate it on the chat and I'll call on you. Uh, I have uh, Camilo, again, from the Nationalist Party here in New York, Junta Nueva York. Uh, that wants to share some additional resources uh, to you all. Camilo? All right. So I just wanted to show a couple books if people want to continue learning about um, the 1950 and about um, the struggle for independence. So there's like Insurrección. It's all about the 1950. It has lots of pictures, a lot of information, and it goes through every pueblo and names every combatant that, that and everybody arrested in the 1950. Mm -hmm. This is Juan Corred, um, the struggle for independence of Puerto Rico. This is available in Spanish and English. And we actually have the PDF, the Spanish PDF. So if people want the PDF in Spanish for that, you can get that. Mis Memorias y Mis Raices. Um, this is from the Ponce de Las Pinas from the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party here in New York. He's been in the struggle since the 70s, and he talks about the struggle, name the first one. All right. Um, 
he made, he talked about the struggle in Austos, about the struggle for the uh, liberation of the political prisoners, um, and and of of after when they came out and his own struggles um, in New York. So somebody asked for the first book again, so I just want to put it back up. La Insurrección uh, Nacionalista de Puerto Rico. Uh, right there. And where can they find it? That was the other question. Where, where can they okay. find it? Um, so, Mis Raices and this one, I can help get you these. This one, as far as I know, is in the Librerias near Yupi, which is in Puerto Rico. Um, you can try like Amazon or something like that, but I'm not sure if that's available. Um, by Correl. Uh, Don Pedro Abisu Campos, he, he goes, um, Jorge was the general secretary of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party, and so he wrote a lot of books, um, especially about Don Pedro. Later on, he founded the Socialist League, but he always was inspired by Don Pedro. This I can get to you in PDF. Yeah. There was a request to put it on, we'll put it on Facebook, all the, all the uh, titles. Awesome. Okay. Sure. Una Vida de Amor y Sacrificio. This is the book about uh, Laura Meneses, which is the wife of Don Pedro Abisu Campos. Mm -hmm. um, I can send you the publisher. They still have these. Uh, this one available is uh, 787 Libros. But we'll put the website up. And so these are all by the same publishers. This is written by Laura Menese about Don Pedro. Um, and then this one is Advisu Campos, Ecritos. So these are his actual writings. Um, and it has lots, lots of good information. And the foreword is actually written by Fidel Castro. He actually wrote the, the foreword. And that's because before. Fidel went into his own revolution. He was actually organized in the University of Havana for the independence of Puerto Rico. He actually did a nationalist speak. I'm not sure if it was uh, Antonio Correr or Juan Guave Guave, but the nationalists went to Cuba to talk about the independence and that's how Fidel Castro learned about the independence of Puerto Rico. Um, and there's many more books. Um, I actually published, uh, me and my father published a book by Antonio Cruz Colón, which is one of the combatants from Hayuya. Um, he, he took part in the 1950 revolution and he, he refused to, when they were parting the political prison, he refused to leave jail until they released the five nationalists here in the United States. So he actually has the distinction of ha having to be kicked out of jail in, in Puerto Rico because he did not want to go until <laughs> until they were free. Um, right. Those are just some of them. I think somebody shared some more. Our Ana Lopez showed some, uh, a lot of other good ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to say that, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. ¿Me pueden oír? Sí. Mira, yo este añadí una bibliografía de, de libros que pueden este, eh, saber más, especialmente el rol de la mujer en, en las revoluciones, en, la, en las revueltas. Este, añadí eh, eh, Acosta, uh, Ivonne Acosta, habla de la ley de la mordaza. Este, Pedro Aponte Vázquez habla del ataque nacionalista. Creo que, que Camilo se enseñó ese libro. Está, eh, por ejemplo, el, el, un libro nuevo que salió de, de Olga Jiménez de Wagenham, Nationalist Heroine, Puerto Rican Women's History Forgot, from 1930s to the 50s. So, ella hace hincapié que la historia se ha olvidado de las mujeres combatientes en, en, en las luchas en Puerto Rico. Y hace un recorrido de como 78 mujeres y da información de cada una, así que definitivamente eh, sería muy bueno. Eh, eh, corregir, eh, Juan Antonio Correr habla del líder de la desesperación, y ahí menciona algunas de las mujeres. 
si alguien quiere leer más sobre Corgel, está el libro de Federico, eh, eh, Federico Rives Tobar, se llama, está en inglés y español, es revolucionario en inglés, The Revolutionary, que hace un historial sobre Don Pedro. Este, oh, y Sage Bruni, Mille, es el libro que nos enseñó este eh, Camilo, está en español en inglés, The Nationalist uh, Uprising. So, lo puse en el chat, este, pero también yo tengo varios PowerPoints de presentaciones que hago con mi estudiante. Tengo uno sobre la mujer eh, y su participación en la lucha por la liberación nacional de Puerto Rico. Eh, si quieren esa información, pues se la puedo enviar también. Eh, pueden ir al frente y a través del frente consiguen eh, mi información. Muchas gracias. Very good. Also, that uh, as a part of the frente, as a part of the frente, we're trying to uh, we're establishing a, a a a resource section to have uh, some of these publications available to the public. Uh, just want to mention that uh, Aixa from out in Oakland, uh, uh, California, uh, set a good point to try to uh, you know seven eight seven libro seven eight seven dot com is an independent bookstore. Let's try to support independent bookstores and independent, particularly Puerto Rican owned uh, uh, businesses. Uh, try not to, you know, uh, uh, use uh, Amazon if at all possible. Uh, but uh, but let's try to support the uh, the 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 independent independent bookstores that are uh, that that need uh, our support to continue to, you know, put out this uh, tremendous work. Uh, Ice, is there any additional comments that you may like to make? Aisha? Here, I'll unmute. Um, I would just like to thank you all for um, all the panelists and this excellent film that I had not seen before. I was very thankful to see. And having grown up in Puerto Rico and taken Puerto Rican history, um, that certainly wasn't in the books. <laughs> so it's, um, I'm very grateful to um, have learned this part of our history. And they did such a great job in the film of showing that to us and showing them as real people too, that are easy to relate to. Um, and I just think that um, Don Pedro, as, as people said, his mom raised him by himself. His dad denied him. He knew like nine languages, six modern languages, three classical. Um, You know, he knew Greek, ancient Greek. He knew um, so many languages. He was such a scientist. That's why it is no um, idle accusation. He knew about radiation. He was um, an engineer. He knew what radiation burns look like and he knew that he had been tortured that way. And they tried to um, minimize it and say that he was, um, not well in the head and he was one of the most brilliant people and i think a wonderful example of any of the students that are still here even if we forget everything else that he did just that with so little um in his favor who grew up poor who was orphaned at a young age that he accomplished so much and excelled so much as a student and was relied upon for by other nations to help them write their constitution and help in their liberation struggles. And we should be very, very proud of all of our nacionalistas. <clears throat> Thank you. We are. Any more? Any more? Okay, I don't, uh, just uh, Pedro, I don't see any comments on the, oh my, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll go to uh, Adrian, este, eh, Viajero. Uh, I think he has a comment for us. Uh, Viajero, go ahead. Hey, I just want to say thank you again. Um, my sentiments are the same. Um, but my comment would be um, to not forget the younger generations. I think we have to, not just younger in the sense of college or high school, but elementary school, middle school, English speaking, Spanish speaking, you know, we have to give a little bit more um, attention to the ones that are going to come later that are going to we got to kind of plant that seed a lot earlier 
in our uh, in our kids' lives or in our family, our friends' kids or neighbors, whatever. Um, you know, just not to forget the the young ones because um, they're they're going to be the ones that are going to carry this uh, further. They're going to carry it for a longer period of time. Um, you know, if there's peer pressure, you want you want these kids to have a positive peer pressure um, about culture. So um, that's just my uh, my input on it. So just piggybacking, just piggybacking off of what Hedo just said, that Hedo's doing some incredible work on 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 a series of books that he's put together called Caras Linda's Books that highlights our revolutionary heroes and leaders. But Hedo's a tremendous artist. Uh, and he's taken on this work to really to really communicate with our children. So that work sh should absolutely be advanced, should be encouraged, and we we need to try to support that as much as possible because that is once uh, once our children get a glimpse of of their history, they'll seek to pursue it as they get older. So Bejero, I thank you in front of the group here, in front of the public for the work that you've done. Uh, I, I support you 100 percent. And I agree with you that we, we must try our best to try to communicate with, the, with our children as, as early as possible to, keep, to get them engaged, to get the information out there. You're doing that work and, uh, and we support you. Uh, I wanna, I wanna I, say, I, John, John, I wanna say that I bought the book and had it autographed by the author and that Averito is reading the book in Spanish and in English. So thank you so much for your book. Thank you. That, that, I, I just want to clarify. That wasn't a plug for me, for me for the book. <laughs> I appreciate it, but you know that that was that was definitely it was definitely appreciated. But um, you know, I I would love to to continue um in that in that realm of trying to figure out other ways to 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 tap into our younger our younger minds. That's okay, uh, Andrea. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I really appreciate you saying that about the children because it is such important work. Mm -hmm. And if we lay those foundations early on when their brain is still a clean slate, those lines in the brain are deep and will not be forgotten. And I know that Albizu Campo, if he were here today, would definitely be looking around and encouraging us to fight for the environment as a scientist that he was. And that's the future for our children. And there won't be a future if we don't include that in our struggle. Yeah, there was a comment, there was a comment from Betty. So, uh, there was a, co a comment from Betty. I'll go ahead and read that in order, in order uh, for the younger generation to get into their wonderful history. <laughs> we'll be and have voiceovers for these documentaries. How can we raise funds? Uh, Betty, that's a good point. And I'll answer that. Um, one of the things that we like to do if anyone would like to to support the work of the uh, of the of the person that produced the documentary, we can accept uh, monies on their behalf at Enfrente.org and then forward it over to the uh, the the filmmaker for the work that they do. My understanding is that they took out lending to do these documentaries that they're still trying to pay off. Um, uh, sometime you know some years later. So whatever anyone can contribute will be appreciated. Anything that we get, just note it that is for the purposes of the filmmaker that did this documentary. And we will forward all of that money to the filmmaker as an honorarium uh, for their work. Because we need to, con to, to continue to encourage filmmakers to continue to do this incredibly important work. Uh, I'll take it back to Inaro Guara that has another question. Uh, Nicole, go ahead. Yes, um, with regards to the heroes of this film, um, just witnessing some of their living conditions and um, I would like to start some funding for that as well. If, I, I'm not sure uh, what's their current status. That's why I asked how long ago was this produced, but we have to honor them. We have to continue to celebrate them. And it continues to break my heart that look at the conditions they're living under. I know. So if we could you know, strategize about that and make you know, some positive movement towards a solution. Um, and I'm always here to, to celebrate and, and invest in, you know, in, in the art sector and, and in the talents of others. But the primary, the primary 
you know, viewpoint here is celebrating them and their, their sacrifices. And just to see them living like that, I, that doesn't sit well with me. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Nicole. That is a conversation that we must have, that we must continue to have. There's, there's no question that when things happen, the last ones to get our support is our people on the ground, which is an effort that we try to do at our clinic to make sure that they do get with our people on the ground, that they're supported, that they're given, whether it's PPEs now in this environment or what have you, we try to do what we can, but the more support we can get up, give our people on the ground uh, with anything and everything, because they do, they, they are short on re resources, that is important work, these are national heroes, and we must try to figure out ways to support yeah. this. Right. Yeah, and that, and I know that's a very human thing. Uh, I was I was impressed. I had the same impression when I saw the home that that nationalist, after giving her so much sacrifice and having that simple home, uh, it, it broke my heart. This is why we need members. This is why I, I, I want to take this opportunity for the audience. We need to get involved. We need committees like that. Committees that are going to be uh, raising funds for things that are very uh, much in need. That's one of them. So uh, as we grow, as we get in touch with El Frente and the organizations that are uh, members of El Frente, uh, we're going to want you to come in and have and, and uh, set up some work and, and do some work uh, internally so that we could um, branch out and do the work that we really need to do. So yeah, thank you for that suggestion. It's a very powerful one. Do have another comment coming from Ramon Espinosa? He has his hand up. Ramon, go ahead. Uh, yes, hello. I Hopefully you could uh, hear and see me. But uh, number one, thank you for this event. I've been actually looking to find this film and watch it. So this gave me the opportunity to see it. So I just wanted to say thank you. It was a nice event. And my question is, is there a way, I, I know it was said earlier that the film is difficult to find. Is there a way where maybe something could happen where someone like me or people could purchase the film, even if it's at an elevated cost to donate, uh, you know, for efforts that were mentioned, um, only because I think that it's something that could be shown in communities. Like I'm willing to organize, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, um, and just help show that film here. But if there's a way that maybe, uh, you know, that that film can be purchased, then even if it's, again, at an increased cost to just, you know, to do, these mm -hmm. things, these wonderful things that people have, uh, these ideas. Right now, the, and I'll add to that, uh, Ramon, right now the movie is uh, uh, sold out. My understanding is that they are making additional copies, but reach out to us here, to specifically Luis Cordero. Uh, you can send an email at uh, frenteinepenentitaboricua at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, Luis uh, is working with the filmmaker, so we'll try to figure out ways of how, of how we can make that happen. For sure. Yeah, my, my understanding is my understanding is that they are they're gonna try to make it available. Let's see. Yeah, they're gonna try to make it available on um, Amazon. Okay, but yeah, I've spoken to uh, Claridad in Puerto Rico because they used to sell it. If you go to their website, the Claritienda, it's listed there, but but they don't have any copies actually. You know, they don't have copies, and it's hard to get. Yeah. All right. Good night. Hey, Ramon, thank you very much. Well, once again, uh, if, again, if anyone wants to contribute anything to the filmmaker, just make a notation and use the PayPal at the website. We will forward 100% of all proceeds that we collect onto the filmmaker. Uh, again, that's whatever anyone can afford. We're, we're very happy to forward that to the filmmaker. Uh, I, I, I hear what you said. Uh, 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 Nicole, we also have to look for ways to do that as well to support our people on the ground, right? Uh, so let's not forget that. Uh, I don't think I have any more questions here, guys. So, uh, um, John, I want to mention something. John, yes. I, I want to mention something with Ramon Espinosa from Hartford okay. that I think we should do some collaborative work with him. Yeah, if, uh, Luis Cordero, if we can um, help Ramon if he wants to show it and. Uh, use it in, in Hartford to educate people in Hartford. I think that will be a wonderful thing and a good organizing uh, mm -hmm. event that we can do with compañeros and compañeras from Hartford. So I just want to extend that yeah. so that Ramon doesn't feel that he's going to be out left field, that he can depend on us for us to work with him on that. Right. Ana, I want to just piggyback. Ramon, if you know, so you're welcome to participate in our meetings 
on Tuesday, if you get in touch with um, uh, Luis Cuidero or uh, John you can, and El Frente, you could come on to a meeting. We would love to have you because then we could talk about what we could help you with in Hartford. So Ana, thank you for that suggestion because that made me think of something else. But that's great. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Take, take, uh, get in touch with us. And if you, any organization that's present, please get in touch with us. This is how we grow. And that was, that was my next question. When is the next meeting? And when could we look forward to a follow-up of this type of work from El Frente? We do. Uh, oh, uh, let me just uh, set that up a little bit, uh, Pedro, and then I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Pe uh, Friends of Puerto Rico, and then Nicole does a lot of our educational work. Right. Uh, they do a tremendous series of, of, of talks and, and charlas and, and stuff. So, Pedro, if you can jump in now and explain that a little further and talk about the work that Friends of Puerto Rico does uh, yes. to, uh, to educate our, uh, our people here. Right. Uh, Friends of Puerto Rico is an organization that started about 2007. And we, we started doing work with the United Nations, raising funds and, and uh, collaborating with, with work being done there and with other organizations. And then we branched out to doing education because we kind of felt that at this particular moment in history, we, our people, need what, you, what we just saw today. We need history. We need education. We need to be on the same page. I always end our, our conversation when we have it, uh, that we need to get on the same page because that's the only way we're going to have a united front against imperialism and to free growth. So if you, if, if you get in touch with Frente or, if I, or get in touch with Friends of Puerto Rico in our Facebook page, you can get in touch with Friends of Puerto Rico Initiative because there's another Puerto, uh, Friends of Puerto Rico in, in, in Florida. That's not us. Puerto Rico, in Frente, you know, a Friends of Puerto Rico Initiative. Is initiative, a, yeah. Because there's, also, there's also Friends of Puerto Rico humanitarian efforts that was right. developed. So if you look at us, if you go for the group page, put your name down, we'll get in touch with you. And if, um, if you want to contribute in giving a teaching, you know, if you have un, un tema, that you want to uh, express, we'll ha have you on and get an audience and, and because we need people to contribute. See, education is not only us to, to out. It gotta come from you out. It's an exchange. It's had to be an exchange. We have to grow together. And this is what we did today. I'm very, very happy. I don't know if I could end in this point. Is there any other comments? Because then we'll end. Um, John, is there anything else? Because uh, I just like to say one other comment and just say that, and just 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 uh, talk a little bit about about the fact that Frente now has a reach across the United States. Where in, we have a presence in Oakland, in LA, in Minnesota, in New York, in New Jersey, and in other places. Uh, we we want this to be uh, uh, an organization of organizations that represents the entire diaspora. So anyone else that remains in this chat, feel free to uh, contact us, please. We encourage you to contact us. As Anna said, our point is to expand this thing, to make it, to support our people in, in Puerto Rico, to, uh, to create the conditions for liberation. Yeah. And I'll turn it back over to Pedro. Right. Uh, uh, Betty, uh, Betty's here, and Betty is, uh, works with, with me and, and Freddie on putting the education together. So Betty, do you have anything to say that is... Uh... Yes. <clears throat> Uh, I totally agree that education is extremely important, raising consciousness. After that, the actions of how we, we're going to funnel that energy can happen in many different ways. But the education and the raising of consciousness is the basis and extremely important. I just wanted, I'm a member of the Friends of Puerto Rico initiative. Uh, I'm so sorry that there are so many splinter groups, but I love that the fact that there's a frente, there's a front that's uniting us. But one of the things I do want to announce is that we want to talk about a, the Friends of Puerto Rico are going to put up political education uh, conferences just like this once a month. And the next one will be about how the elections affect the next elections, November 3rd, affects the Puerto Rican population, and how in the next month, how the United States elections will affect Puerto Rico. After that, we want to touch on, I'm going to give you general themes on 
what does that mean to be independent in Puerto Rico? What does that mean economically? What does that mean in actual uh, practice? To be independent, como? How are we gonna do that? What does that look like? Let's really talk about that. The other thing that's extremely imperative is to talk about the climate, the climate crisis and how it's gonna affect Puerto Rico and the rest of the world. What is our role in it? How is it gonna affect Puerto Rico? What can we do to live sustainably? We're already in practice after Hurricane Maria saw that the community got together and through the base built community life and sustainability. So we have to talk about sustainability in Puerto Rico. So these are major issues and topics that we're going to be talking about and that we all should be part of. So I welcome everyone to please come and share with us during these political education conferences, these very important themes. Right. We're, we're, you, you didn't mention, the, and it's very important, the women. We're going to have conferences on the women, which is very, very, as you saw in the, in the video today, in the film, the women play an important role in the struggle. And it's there, they're our other half. So we need to talk about that too. So we're going to also talk about the women's role. So, and we continue so I, to play that role. Huh? And Maybe you want to be on the panel. Maybe you want love to. to. I would love to. And and, yeah. and, and I, I, you know, I participated in several Las Lolitas events. I work very closely with Anna with regards to that movement. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's it's very important that we get recognized for our leadership, and, and not at a discounted, you know, perception right. at all. So, I would love to to you know uh, cultivate that going forward. Get in, touch, get in touch with us and we'll, and we'll see how we can work together. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, um, uh, is there any other comment? Um, I think we have it. I think we have it covered. Already. Again, again, man, this was a, a wonderful celebration. We, we, we've done it. You know, one of the great things about doing things is that we set the objective. We, we accomplished it. And I think um, we did a fantastic job. I want to thank... Um, Ana Lopez uh, for her contribution and her, uh, como habló, bien, bien chévere, fantástico. Uh, Camilo Matos for your contribution. El poema de Miguel eh, Fiol y el reconocimiento a Manuel eh, la, bandera, la Bandera for his up to date bringing us of what's happening in Puerto Rico. I also want to thank you, John, for uh, uh, holding the meetings uh, that we put together uh, in Enfrente and Luis for his uh, technical work in making it, uh, helping it uh, to function uh, as it should. Um, this is very, very important. I wanna also thank the audience, everybody who came here. All good things come to an end, I guess this one did. And we always end every program I was in, in, in Friends of Puerto Rico, let's get on the same page. Good night, gracias, hasta la revolución, bye bye.